This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 41. Becoming Superman, Kick the Crap Out of Kryptonite by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey, welcome back. It's another week of Optimal Health Daily. Happy Monday. I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil Malik, and today we're gonna have another post from Steve of Nerd Fitness. Before we get into Steve's post, I thought I'd share with you something. Just yesterday, I finished a book called The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin. It was actually a book that my sister-in-law gave to my wife, and it was just sitting on the bookshelf, and I thought, hey, I'm looking for something to read. Happiness has always interested me, so I'll take a look at it. And what I found, it was really motivating. Grant, much of the book was from a woman's perspective, of course, because the author is a woman. But even as a male, I found a lot of the concepts to be applicable to me. And so today's quote of the day actually comes from this book. And here it goes. One of the best ways to make yourself happy is to make other people happy. One of the best ways to make other people happy is to be happy yourself. For me, this really rang true. Doing this podcast makes other people happy. And because it makes others happy, it makes me happy. But the only reason I could do this podcast in the first place is because I was happy with my station in life. I was happy with where I finally gotten to. You may not be at that place yet in your life, and that's okay. You'll get there. Continue following what's important to you, what's interesting to you, and I guarantee you will find that happy place. All right, that's enough of that. Before we get into the post, I want to remind you that we give away books every month to random people on our mailing list. So if you want to be entered into that and also show some support for this podcast, swing by our website, oldpodcast.com, and join the mailing list. It's totally free. It's a great way to show that you like what you hear. And so we really, really appreciate it. For a faster way to join, you can text the word Batman, yes, the superhero Batman, to the number 44222. And what I really love about Steve's post today is that he references one of the other most famous superheroes, probably the most famous superhero, Superman, in his post. So you're going to hear about that in a second. So that's it for now. Let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. Becoming Superman. Kick the crap out of kryptonite by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. When I was a little kid, I went to Superman for Halloween probably five or six years in a row. I'm not kidding. I freaking loved Superman, watching all the movies on repeat and wearing a cape as often as possible. I even wore red undies on the outside sometimes. Yep. So why did I love Superman so much? Because he's a total badass. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, and able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, who wouldn't want to be Superman, right? Now, although the Man of Steel is pretty much indestructible, there's one thing that can take him down quickly. Kryptonite. Suck. Pretend for a minute that you're Superman in a quest for weight loss and a healthier lifestyle. I bet you've tried to get in shape in the past. You've probably even had some success and watched the number on your scale get smaller and smaller. However, there's that one thing or two that eventually always knocked you off your path and sent you in a downward spiral back to complacency and unhealthiness. This failure is your kryptonite, and if you really want to become a superhero, you're going to have to learn how to deal with it. Identify it. If you've tried to get in shape before and failed, obviously something went wrong, or you'd already be where you want to be. Did you get sick and give up? Did you drown your sorrows in a week-long binge after your team lost in the playoffs? Did you have a birthday at work and eat an entire cookie cake by yourself? Maybe you just ran out of steam and lost your motivation. Think about your past experiences with fitness and wellness and write down what went wrong. Usually there's an event or two that you can point to as the cause of your downfall. This is important. Don't beat yourself up about having a weakness. If Superman can have one, so can you. Now, Superman's weakness is easy for him to identify. It's green, it came from a meteorite, it glows and makes him feel like Discovering yours might not be so easy. These are mine. 1. Traveling for work My job at Sixth Man has me traveling quite a bit on cruise ships. While on these ships, I take terrible care of myself. I barely eat, 
I rarely sleep, and I usually end up sick as a dog for the week after each cruise due to my immune system being so worn down. This derails my efforts to build strength and muscle every time. Number two, absent-mindedness at work. When I'm not traveling, I sometimes get so absorbed in work that I often forget to eat lunch or my snacks throughout the day. If I'm going to build some serious muscle, I need to be eating great food all day, every day. Whether it's muscle gain or weight loss, diet is the most important thing, and I fail more often than I should. And number three, time management. I work on nerd fitness in my free time, and I'm a terrible time manager. I don't sleep enough, and I don't get to work out as often as I'd like because I dump all of my free time into this website, which I don't mind because I love helping people. Make a plan to deal with it. Once you've figured out your kryptonite, it's time to take care of business. Put on your cape and make sure your kryptonite doesn't take you down again. The best solution I found for setting new habits comes from Leo over at Zen Habits. Number one, write down your plan. Number two, identify your triggers and replacement habits. Number three, focus on doing the replacement habits every single time the triggers happen for about 30 days. If you signed up for the 28-day challenge on the Nerd Fitness message boards, is where the cool kids hang out, this is a perfect opportunity for you to kick your kryptonite to the curb. Here's how I plan on dealing with mine. Traveling for work. I need to take better care of myself on these cruises. I have two more cruises coming up in April and May, and I need to take at least one night on each where I don't stay out after a long day of work and just get some sleep. Recharging my batteries once in the middle of a cruise should be enough for me to not get sick afterwards. Absent-mindedness at work. I've set a reminder on my computer to remind me every day to eat lunch. Yes, this sounds ridiculous, but it works. I also make sure I put a big bag of almonds on my desk as soon as I walk in the office so my brain remembers to eat them throughout the day. Time management. I need to take care of myself. I spend too much time messing around the internet when trying to write these articles, so I'm working on writing shorter, more concise posts that still have the same impact with nerd fitness readers. I will always battle to be healthy if I can't find a way to get more sleep. This is really tough for me, so any advice you have would be helpful. What's your kryptonite and how do you plan on dealing with it? There's no reason we all can't be superheroes. So let's help each other out. You just listened to the post titled Becoming Superman, Kick the Crap Out of Kryptonite by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. It was kind of perfect that I read a post from Leo Babauta of Zen Habits just last week and then Steve actually referenced him in this post. It's a small world among these big health and fitness bloggers, so it was great to see that they referenced each other. Steve brought up some really important points in this post. One, he emphasized the importance of coming up with a plan and writing it down. Now, I know this sounds like work, and when it comes to doing more work, most people say, forget it, I'm not gonna do it. But let me give you an example from my own life. I created a little exercise calendar for me and my wife. It's a really simple calendar, We've got the days of the week listed, and then under each day of the week, it's got a box. In the box, I write in what I did for my workout that day. My wife has the exact same thing. Now, to be honest, it really wasn't me who was having issues working out. It was my wife, but I wanted to support her. She was asking me, how can I be more consistent with my workouts? So I thought, let's put this calendar on the fridge. Let's write down when we worked out and what we did, and let's just see what happens. I said, I will do it too. I'll do it with you. Sure enough, it's worked really, really well. And it's so simple. We see this calendar multiple times a day when we go to the fridge. And it's a constant reminder of, ooh, I haven't worked out in two days. Or, wow, I worked out really hard yesterday. Maybe I go lighter today. My wife has been able to see, wow, I haven't worked out in three or four days. I'm due. That comes from her. It doesn't come from me saying, honey, you said you wanted to work out more. You should go. She gets to see it on her own. The idea comes from her, and that's super important. So no matter what your system is, if you write stuff down, if you write your goals down, if you keep track, we're actually finding from a lot of research that this can be really, really helpful. Those that write things down, those that watch and monitor their behaviors tend to be more successful. And again, that's not my opinion. We have lots and lots of data on that. The other thing he mentioned that was really, really great was changing your environment. He puts almonds out on his desk to remind him to eat. He sets an alarm 
to remind himself to eat lunch. These are great ideas and so, so simple. It takes a second to set up an alarm. It doesn't take much to portion out some almonds, put them on your desk. That's it. Those little fixes alone can make a huge difference when it comes to behavior. And I believe I mentioned this on this podcast before. If you want to eat more fruits and vegetables, make sure fruits are available on your countertop in plain sight. And when you open your fridge, the vegetables are right there in plain sight, not down below in the crisper drawer where they remain hidden and you forget about them. I bet you even those small fixes will get you to change your behavior. Now, like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can be entered to win books every single month if you're part of our free weekly newsletter. We're actually gonna be adding another book to our giveaways, so stay tuned for that and definitely join our mailing list now to be a part of one coming up soon. You can join really quickly by texting the word Batman to 44222 or again, visit us online at oldpodcast.com. Now, I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. Tomorrow, I'll be reading a post from Good Life Zen. So definitely come back and listen for that where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.